Good morning and welcome back to our science lessons. Uh, we're currently going through the space topic. You have as your host, Mr. Kanwa, Director of Science, and we're going to be looking at galaxies and the universe. Lesson one was on planets in the solar system. Lesson two looked at different features within the solar system that we perhaps haven't heard of. And now we're going way beyond the solar system. So we're going into the galaxies and the universe. I think this is a fascinating topic. Um, not much is known about it. Um, and I don't think we have a great understanding of it for certain. Um, most of this work is uh, the theoretical, uh, but hopefully we should learn something new. So like I said, today's date, um, even though I've recorded this in advance, is Monday the 4th of May. That does mean that today, if you are listening to this on a Monday, your quiz for lesson one and lesson two will close in the forthcoming hours. So if you've not completed your quizzes for lesson one and lesson two, particularly the multiple choice questions, do make sure that you do those um, before uh, Monday is out because we'll be recording scores and then um, putting them into our mark books to say who has done it and who has not. So like I said, we're on lesson three and our Aspire, Aspire today is uh, describe the formation of the universe. Big Bang, also known as the Big Bang, and galaxies, and our challenge, which hopefully should be quite interesting, I think, um, identify different types of galaxies. So that's what we're looking at today in our lesson. So as we uh, start every lesson, what we need to make sure that we have is we have a pen and paper, or if you're writing in an exercise book, that's absolutely fine. Just whatever you're writing uh, your notes on, just make sure that you have it with you. And as per usual, we should recap our previous learning. So just to make sure that before we carry on, we can remember uh, or understand some of the aspects that we did last lesson. So if you remember last lesson, we spoke about different features within the solar system that possibly that, that just are not the planets. So we've got the asteroid belt. We've got the Kuiper belt. We've got the heliosphere and we've got the Oort cloud. So there are four there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to approximately give you 20, 20 to 30 seconds for each one. If you can jot those down, I mean, you could number them one, two, three, and four, or you can just call it um, asteroid, Kuiper, heliosphere, and Oort cloud. Just give me a fact about them. That fact may simply be where they're located or just something about them. I'm going to, I'm going to give you uh, approximately two minutes with 30 seconds. I'll give you a 30 second timer. So you could start straight away. So just as a hint, if, you, if you're struggling perhaps um, with something to write, have a look at the diagram. If you look at the diagram, you should be able to either remember something about uh, one of those features or you could just tell me the location of them. If you can name me something that you find in them, that would be, that'd be brilliant. So like in the Kuiper Belt, we know there's a dwarf planet, for example, in there. The heliosphere is produced by something in the solar system but it's there to protect us from something as well um, the Oort cloud uh, similar to the asteroid belt so they've got fairly similar features but one clearly you can see is larger than the other so our 30 second timer There we go, our 30 seconds is up, our time is up. 
Um, just a simple fact about each one very quickly. So if we start off with the asteroid belt, and again, I'll just, there we go, we'll circle it in red there, so you just know which bit we're talking about. In between Mars and Jupiter, that's the location. Mainly made up of rock, ice, dust, um, and those are remnants of perhaps either a planet not forming, or perhaps collisions in the early bombardment, can't even say that, bombardment stage. Uh, within the solar system when some of the planets were still moving into their relative orbits so we've got some debris left from that then it's the then we've got the heliosphere just down here that that protects us from interstellar radiation that's what the sun produces via solar winds so you can see there's the there's the border of the heliosphere and that protects us uh, from interstellar radiation we've then got the kuiper belt which if i just highlight there that is the edge. So that again is very similar to the um, asteroid belt. However, it's much larger. And within there, you've got the planet Pluto, or I should say the dwarf planet Pluto now. So Pluto uh, is within the Kuiper belt. And then the Oort cloud, which is more theoretical. So here we are, the Oort cloud. It's more theoretical. It's like a giant bubble uh, that encapsulates the whole solar system. And those objects within it were first created when the when uh, the sun uh, became active and it produced lots of debris from the solar system pushed it out uh, into this so-called Oort cloud but again it is only theoretical so that's a recap of the previous lesson right let's start with what we're doing today right so where should we start we should probably start with our own galaxy so we know our solar system we have these, we have eight planets within it. We know the borders of the solar system. We know that we can get towards the furthest outreaches, probably the Oort cloud. However, we are just one star. The Milky Way is a galaxy that contains our star. So our galaxy is known as the Milky Way. Now, there is an estimate that there are 100 to 400 billion stars within our galaxy. So within the Milky Way, there are 100 to 400 billion stars. Now that number is massive. It is absolutely massive. So when we think about our one star, we think about our eight planets. So let's think about 100 billion of those planets. Uh, sorry, not even the planets. Let's think about 100 billion, 100 billion to 400 billion stars. And each of those stars has the potential for a planetary system like we've got now. So imagine how many planets we could possibly have. Well, if you just take the figure that we've got eight planets and say there's 100 billion sp um, stars, you've therefore got 800 billion planets straight away, which I think is an amazing. Now, our Milky Way is known as a barred spiral galaxy. We've got two images there, you can see, and you can see that I've labelled where we think we are, well, where we've located ourselves. So you can see that we are here, as it says in red. So we're on one of the spirals. You can see that the spiral comes out, the spiral arm, I should say. So we're on one of the arms. Now, this image isn't very clear, and it's only recently that it's come to light that our galaxy actually looks like this. Our galaxy looks like that. So you, what you can see is if I were to show it just quickly in red on the second image, is that this is a bar, this is a kind of bar here, okay? On the edges of that bar, you've got two arms, one going in that direction and one going in that direction. They're very tightly packed, so if you go back to this image, you can see that they're very tightly packed. But if you were to follow it, you would have two large protruding arms, okay? two large protruding arms, one called the Scutum Centaurus and one called Perseus. So what is our galaxy? Well, it's exactly what it what I've described it as, a barred, because you can see that in the centre, a barred spiral galaxy with two arms. Our sun, on the second diagram, you can just about see it, is there. So we're probably halfway, if I were to draw my arrow, we're halfway between the centre, which is there, and the edge, which is here. So probably halfway um, 
within our galaxy. But our galaxy, known as Milky Way, is a barred spiral galaxy and it has two arms. A little bit more detail. Although it's got two arms, there's lots of other arms. You can see on this diagram, you can see that there are lots of other protruding arms coming out from the main ones as well. And we're seen, or we are, on the Orion. So if I were to write that. <laughs> there we go, freehand writing. And um, so we're on the Orion arm. That's where we find ourselves in the Milky Way. Um, just another fact for you. And, and this is quite difficult to understand, actually. Um, what's the size of our galaxy? Well, the size of our galaxy is between 150,000 and 200,000 light years. So I'm not talking about kilometers or meters or miles or hundreds of millions of miles. What I'm talking about is light years. Now, light, a light year we will talk about in much greater detail in the next lesson. But just consider how quick light travels. That's all you need to think about, how quick light travels. Well, if you consider how quick light travels, it would take light between 150 and 200,000 years to get from one side of our galaxy, say for example, here, I'll just put it in a star, to that star, to that side. So that would take 150,000 years for light to travel. And we know light travels really quickly. Again, we will come to this next lesson. So that's a bit about our Milky Way. That's a bit about our barred spiral galaxy. So what is a galaxy? So we've spoken about our galaxy being the Milky Way, but what actually is it? You can see, I've, I've got some images there for you. You can see there's the night sky. You'd obviously need a really clear night. One of the things that um, scientists have said, and I don't know whether you've noticed, I've definitely noticed, if you go out and have a look at the night sky currently, I'm going off topic here, but if you go out uh, in your garden and have a look at the night sky, even if, you, if, you, even if you're in cities, because the air pollution is much lower, because obviously there's no aircraft, there's no cars, there's, there's fewer cars driving around, the air pollution uh, has been reduced. And the light pollution has also been reduced because you don't get all the aeroplanes going uh, in the night sky. Um, what, that, what that means is that our sky has become clearer, so clear. I went out the other day uh, just to have a look at some of the satellites that were going across. And uh, you get some incredible images. And this is one of the images that you can get. It's actually from the Sahara Desert, this one. Um, but that image shows you one of the spiral arms. So you can see that the spiral arm is there and you can see that dark dust lane, so to say, in the middle, um, just here. Uh, that's like the cent that's like looking at the centre of the Milky Way. That's like looking at the centre of our galaxy. And again, this this diagram up here, this one here that I'll label as one, this shows you our planet Earth within our solar system, and that's where our solar system is. So it just kind of gives you the idea of size, the gigantic size that we're in. But what are or what is a galaxy? Well, quite simply, and I'll just read the definition. A galaxy is a huge collection of gas, dust and billions of stars and their solar systems all held together by gravity. And that's it. That's all a galaxy is. And what you essentially get, and I, I'm going to use a word that I shouldn't really use, but you just kind of get a massive cluster of stars together with with the original gases and the dust that they were used to make. And they just form these galaxies. And we'll talk about forming again. If you were to look up at the night sky, you will see stars in the Milky Way. So all those stars that you can see are within our Milky Way. It's very difficult with the naked eye to see. You won't see anything beyond that. That's what we need the telescopes for. Uh, one of the biggest um, or uh, best telescopes there are is Hubble, and I've got a short video to show you about it. But that is what a galaxy is. So um, the next thing is talking about how a galaxy forms. And with this, there are two theories on galaxy formation. So that it's very straightforward. We can either have a so-called bottom-up theory. And what that means is that basically what you've got is you've got all the gas and you've got all the dust and it collapses and it compresses 
and whilst they collapse and compress they produce or they make uh, lots uh, or I should say millions of suns um, they then clump together and merge to build galaxies so basically you're going from dust gas combining producing suns suns merge together or they come closer together and they build galaxies that's bottom up the opposite therefore is top down you just start bigger whereby you have these massive clumps to start off with and actually they break off and they become individually galaxies they become individual galaxies so you start big and you get smaller or they break off or you start with dust and gas and they get bigger we're unsure about which theory is correct again in science as with, as with most things um, to explain something we need to come up with a theory very much like we are coming up with theories about COVID-19 we don't know and at this point when I'm saying this we don't know whether we can get immunity we don't know we think we do we also don't know whether we could get at this point in time whether we could get COVID-19 again. How long could we get it again? Is there a vaccine? We don't necessarily know. We're hoping that there is, and I'm sure we will get one. They are theories. The science, when they talk about, is the theory. Uh, and that's important to understand. We don't know. We have to theorize, then practice. That's why science is so important. If anything, the period of time that we're sat at home proves that to understand how science works is vitally important. Whether you want to be a business, whether you want to work in science, whether you want to be some uh, a teacher, or whether you want to be a, an engineer, or whether you want to be a mechanic, it doesn't matter. At this point in time, life cannot continue as we wanted it to because we need to understand our science better. And I know we're talking about space here, but it's really important when we talk about any sort of science, we talk about theory, practice, evidence. And a lot of this lesson today is all about evidence and theory. And a lot of what we're going through in our lives today is all about evidence and theory. So I really want you to think about when we go back to school, or when you think about what is science, why do I need it? This is the prime example. This is the prime example of why we need science. Anyway, whether you go with bottom up or top down, what we get is we get proto galaxies. Proto just means before the galaxy is actually formed. So proto, like a prototype, is the first thing that you get. And it's mainly made of dark matter and hydrogen gas. The hydrogen goes in towards the centre and the dark matter stays around the outside, creating a halo. That's basically what happens. So proto galaxies are made up of dark matter and hydrogen gas. But that's how galaxies form, we think. Obviously, we, we won't be able to see it because it takes millions and billions of years for those galaxies to form. And these produce different galaxies. So here's here's a uh, an image that I've got of six different types of galaxies. The, you know, um, we say six, but actually there's probably around about four uh, types of major galaxies, but we've got six here. Um, the two most famous ones that I should say, or the ones that are most recognisable, are the spiral and the barred spiral. The Milky Way is a barred spiral. A spiral here, you can see, is more whirlpool-esque, okay? What you've got is you've got a disc, a bulge, and a halo. That's what that's what you've got. Then you've got various arms that come out, and it looks like a whirlpool. Um, the barred spiral is simply, you've got a bar here going across, and then you've got arms that go out. Our Milky Way is that. That's generally, that, they're the two major types. Yeah. Most, most galaxies are actually elliptical, as you can see here, so elliptical, where they just look like, like an American football, that sort of shape, that's what they look like in American football. So if you think about a rugby ball in American football, that's what they kind of look like, an elliptical shape. Most galaxies are like that. Um, a lenticular is when you've got um, a spiral galaxy and an elliptical galaxy coming together. And they produce some quite nice looking galaxies. Irregular, well, that's fairly straightforward. It just looks strange. Most, most of the time, what you've got with an irregular galaxy is that they are splitting apart. They're splitting apart. So you can see you may have got different uh, parts of the galaxy, one major galaxy, splitting apart into lots of different ones. Um, 
but they are formed they've got lots of gas dust um, they've got some nebulas and obviously in the in the middle of most of these in the middle of most of these here like for example or here you've got supermassive black holes that's what they rotate around um, and then there's the peculiar ones which are basically um, you know you could have two spirals coming together uh, forming one so basically they're, they're the ones that aren't categorized in the other and they're seen as basically strange looking galaxies galaxies so they're not irregular but they're peculiar in the fact that you might get an irregular and a barred spiral coming together you might get a spiral and an elliptical coming together and that's what they create and they may eventually form a lenticular or they may form something else but they're the six different types of galaxies that we're going to learn or i'm going to show you today so there you go our six images for those galaxies so now we've looked at the formation of galaxies uh, the different types of galaxies and our own galaxy. Um, I just want to bring that all together. So what I've got is I've just got a very short video. I'm about two minutes long and it's from the Hubble telescope and it's done in 3D um, imagery. So it's not a, a computer generated uh, video. It is an actual video of the 3D image that Hubble has collected over a long period of time um, in regards to galaxies. It, it's it. it it's truly remarkable. I, I think I find this stuff uh, exceptionally fascinating, as I've said, probably around about two or three times. And I will continue to say that. But I just want you to, to have a watch and see what you think. And then we're going to ask some questions uh, at the end of that video just to make sure that we fully understand. But this is a kind of um, review of everything that we've done so far. And there will be mention it will mention different types of galaxies within it. See what you think. Galaxies are like islands in the sea of space. They glow with the light of billions of suns. The Hubble telescope reveals nearby galaxies in exquisite detail. Galaxies like these fill the universe. Space, we see an astonishing array of distant galaxies. It takes billions of years for their light to reach us. We see them not as they are, but as they once were. In one tiny region of the sky, Hubble finds some 30,000 galaxies. Within a single image, we can explore 10 billion years of cosmic history. Relatively nearby galaxies are fully formed with complete spiral structures and smooth elliptical shapes. As we travel farther into space, we see galaxies as they were further back in time. These galaxies appear somewhat disheveled, their mature structures still developing. When the universe was young, newly formed galactic disks were ablaze with star formation. Beyond this point, clumps of stars that are beginning to form galaxies. We've seen but a handful of the billions of galaxies stretched across space and time. Just one small sliver of the universe observed by Hubble. So as with all my learning checks, it's very simple, multiple choice, five questions. First one, what is the name of our galaxy? A, Andromeda, B, Oort cloud, C, solar system, or D, the Milky Way. 
Question two, what type of galaxy is our Milky Way? Is it A, a barred spiral, B, a whirlpool spiral, C, elliptical, or D, irregular? Question three, what type of galaxy is shown in the image below? You can see, is it A, a barred spiral, B, a whirlpool spiral, C, an elliptical, or D, irregular? Question four, what type of galaxy is shown in this image? A, a barred spiral, B, a whirlpool spiral, C, elliptical, or D, irregular? Might be a tricky one, that one. And question five, what type of galaxy is shown in this image? A, a barred spiral, B, a whirlpool spiral, C, elliptical, or D, irregular? Our answers, right, number one, what is the name of our galaxy? Hopefully you've all got that right, D, the Milky Way. Question two, what type of galaxy is our Milky Way? Hopefully you've got A, barred spiral. We did used to think it was a whirlpool spiral, but we now know it is a barred spiral. Certain images that we've got now uh, from telescopes such as Hubble uh, prove that to be the case. So it's a barred spiral with two arms, remember. Question three, what type of galaxy is shown in that image? That is a whirlpool spiral. Now you can see it's got quite a few arms. It's not a bar. You can't see the bar going across it. It's not elliptical and it's not irregular. Question four, what type of galaxy is shown in this image? It was an elliptical, that one. So it was C. Question four was C, elliptical. Um, it's not a spiral. You can see that straight away. Is it irregular? Well, there's nothing irregular about the shape. Um, and that's that's basically how you judge it. So there's nothing irregular. So it'll have to be an elliptical one, that one. And the final one, question five, what type of galaxy is shown in that image? That is irregular. It doesn't really have much structure to it. It's not an elliptical. It's too spread out. It's not. A, it's definitely not a whirlpool spiral or a barred spiral. So that is an irregular one, uh, that um, galaxy. So hopefully you managed to get a five out of five. But if you managed to get above three, that's pretty good going. Just have a recheck of what it is that you perhaps got wrong. Maybe some of the images weren't clear, to be honest. But just do have a check and see what you think. Um, but hopefully we've got five out of five. OK, so we've done quite a bit on galaxies and the formation. And just a few things before we start on the Big Bang. Um, our nearest galaxy that is not a dwarf galaxy, and I'll talk about exactly what a dwarf galaxy means or a satellite galaxy, is Andromeda, M30, also known as M31. However, in between us, or the Milky Way, I should say, and Andromeda, there are lots of other galaxies known as dwarf galaxies, many of them are peculiar or irregular galaxies. They're called dwarf because they're quite small, that's it. However, they are humongous. I'm not talking about small as in like the size of a, they are humongous still. They have millions uh, of stars. However, they are regarded as dwarf. The closest one to us is called Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy. Okay, and um, that's the nearest one to us. Now they are satellite galaxies. So they effectively orbit the Milky Way, just as the Earth orbits the Sun, and the Sun takes 250 million years to kind of orbit the Milky Way. So you've got galaxies now orbiting, your galaxies orbiting other galaxies. Essentially, they will create clusters, and within those clusters, those clusters will make up or will join with other clusters to make super clusters. And once you get to those superclusters, then those superclusters, if you've got lots of those superclusters, will then form what we know as the universe and the image that you've got in front of you. Now, the Big Bang Theory, I should say, not the program I'm talking about, obviously, um, which, by the way, is quite funny. Uh, but the Big Bang Theory um, is a theory. We've got evidence, and I'm not going to go through that because I've got a short video that will explain that evidence. Um, but I want you to... Again, imagine the importance of understanding where we have come from. And the Big Bang hopefully tries to explain that. What happens before the Big Bang? Well, that's a very good question. I don't, we don't know. We can only theorise. So this is, this is an aspect of science where 
I can't tell you a direct answer. I can talk about the theory and someone else can talk about theory with you, but there are no direct answers. Through observations, through observations, which is how this image is formed, we can come up with an answer and a theory. Can we prove it? Probably not. Probably not. But the, but the evidence suggests that this is the theory that we should go with. Anyway, do have a listen to the video. This is the timeline of the Big Bang, the timeline of the universe. Now, we know that it began around 13.7 billion years ago, back there, in the Big Bang. And we know that when it began, it was really a formless, unimaginably hot ball of not even matter. In fact, we think that all the forces of nature were merged together. There were no particles as we know them today. But as the universe continued to cool and expand, then we think that the particles that we're made of and the forces that we're familiar with today crystallized out. I mean, one of the most important moments was something that's got a fancy name called electroweak symmetry breaking. is the point when mass entered the universe for the first time, when things got substance for the first time. It's just back there, about a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. And we're investigating that at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Geneva. We then know that the universe continued to cool and expand after around about a second then the familiar particles that make up the atomic nuclei of stars and planets and us, the protons and neutrons, formed in the universe. We know that after about three minutes, so somewhere around there, there was hydrogen and helium in the universe, the first two, the simplest chemical elements. The universe then continued to expand and cool and after about 350 to 400,000 years, the universe was cold enough and diffuse enough for electrons to go into orbit around the hydrogen and helium nuclei to form atoms. At that point, the universe became transparent for the first time. Light could travel through the universe. And amazingly, we can detect that light now as it rains down on the Earth as something called the cosmic microwave background radiation. The universe then continued to expand and cool. It got cold enough for gravity to clump matter together into stars and planets and galaxies. And this is the age of the universe that we now live in. It's called the Stelliferous Era, the age of the stars. That's somewhere like here. Then, in the book, we continue onwards into the far future. Actually, to the point in the future when we think all the stars will have gone and even black holes will have evaporated away. And here's the amazing thing. If I carried on this sheet of paper, this background, and I went into the far future to, to find the most distant thing we can talk about with any certainty, something that happened 10 to the power 100 years in the future, then this background would not fit in the universe. Truly fascinating stuff, fascinating stuff, I have to admit. Uh, that aspect is mind-blowing, so to think about, um, that was an email in the background, clearly I haven't silenced it, but anyway, um, that's the reality of home learning. Um, so the fact that everything began in possibly like uh, a pinprick and is expanded so rapidly, and as um, Brian Cox said, you know, if we were to look into the future, that piece of paper that he's got so we talk about 14 approximately 14 billion years is our universe and we can fit that on a page on, on on the image that he's got however the forward the forward aspect of time is so great that that piece of paper would wouldn't fit in the universe which is an amazing thought that that's an amazing thought because we talk about massive amount of time anyway that is the theory of the big bang that's where it's come from. The image that I showed you in the showed you before I showed uh, the video was um, the initial light um, image that we saw, um, say like uh, three minutes or uh, three minutes into uh, what were once electrons. Sorry, I should say were able to carry the light. So not until that point was there any light. It was actually dark 
in the universe. So the idea of the Bible saying, actually, let there be light is actually quite an interesting concept because theoretically it's right. So it was dark and then it became light. I'm not sure whether they knew that. But anyway, you know, there there is, um, you know, a biblical quotation in there. Right. So what, what are we doing? Well, th that's a lesson over. However, I don't think the learning ends there. I think if you want to find there are ton, there are many, many interesting um, documentaries on it. There was a recent one about Hubble um, on the BBC. It was a Horizons one. I do suggest it was only on last week. Uh, brilliant images, uh, brilliant explanations. Um, I suggest that you go and watch it if you find this topic really interesting. Uh, but it's on uh, BBC One or BBC Two. Just have a look at iPlayer and type in Hubble and you can see a BBC is now a documentary on it. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so tasks. As usual, task one will be answer 10 multiple choice questions. It'll be very similar to the style that I uh, had earlier. Task two, describe in no more than 150 words the evidence of the Big Bang and the beginnings of the universe. So basically describe the formation of the universe for me. And then extension task, what is dark matter? Uh, we kind of briefly spoke about it in, in terms of forming galaxies, but what is it? What is it? Go and have a research, go and Google it or have, get your get your encyclopedias out or whatever it is that you do. Uh, but have a look, because it's quite interesting considering that most, most of the known universe is made from dark matter. And likely as some of you is also made from dark matter. So it's quite interesting. So there are three tasks. The date, you've got one week to complete those quizzes. Just a reminder that last week's lesson should be now finishing. And then I will join you for lesson four, um, either straight away or later on should be out on uh, on Wednesday, if not earlier. Um, however, the next slide will be a summary slide. So if you want to get some notes, uh, you're very welcome to get those notes. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all safe. And I look forward to seeing you for the next lesson. At, at this point, I will bid you farewell.